Well, good day, everybody, and welcome to another Sunday School lesson from Court Street United Methodist Church. Uh, appreciate your being with us today, as always, and hope you're doing well. Uh, I'd like to go to the Lord in prayer, if we may, to get started. Father, we thank you for, once again, allowing us to, to study your word, and come into your presence, and, and come to know you better through your word. We, uh, we look forward to the return of being in person and studying your word together and discussing it more thoroughly and just uh, again coming to know you even better through that uh, through that venue and look forward to doing that we just thank you for all you do for us in Christ's name amen well again next week we're going to be returning to in-person worship service that'll be uh, Sunday May the 9th and worship service at the church will be at 9.30. And that will be followed by Sunday school at 10.45. So there will be plenty of uh, social distancing and uh, safeguards to, to continue to protect your health. So if you are able and willing, we would certainly love to have you join us and, and participate in, in our Sunday school lesson. We always enjoy that open discussion, delving into the Word, finding out more about it. Uh, lots of questions get raised in the, in the time of uh, Sunday school lesson, Sunday school study, and studying the Word. Lots of questions get raised, and there's no question that uh, this book can't answer. And, uh, so we, we look forward to those questions. We look forward to those discussions and you know I think they just strengthen us in our faith and in our knowledge of, of God's word. Today our lesson is entitled God declares who God is and the passages are from Exodus and the purpose of the statement is to understand who God is in the light of God's revelation to Moses. So let's remember that, uh, uh, well, let's go, go ahead and read the, the scripture passages. And the passages come from the 33rd and 34th chapters of the book of Exodus. The, um, the 33rd chapter includes the first six verses as background reference for the for the lesson and I'm also going to read those because I think it's important for us to to know what that background was before we delve into the lesson so I'm going to start out by reading the first uh, six verses of the book of Exodus it says then the Lord uh, yes then the Lord said to Moses leave this place and you and the people you brought up out of Egypt and go to the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I will send an angel before you and drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Go up to the land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go with you. Be because you are a stiff-necked people, and I might destroy you on the way. When the people heard these distressing words, they began to mourn, and no one put on any ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, You are a stiff-necked people. If I were to go with you even for a moment, I might destroy you. Now take off your ornaments, and I will decide what to do with you. So the Israelites stripped off their ornaments at Mount Hor. Again, that's first six chapters, a little bit of background there. Then we move to the 12th through the uh, 23rd uh, verses of the book of Exodus in the 33rd chapter. Moses said to the Lord, 
You have been telling me to lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your way so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I shall have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face may not, must not be seen. The last verses that constitute our lesson scripture today are from the 34th chapter and it's verses 5 through 8. So I'm going to I'm going to share those with you right now. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious Lord, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of their fathers to the third and fourth generation. Moses bowed to the ground at once and worshipped. At this point in time, at this point in the journey, the Israelites are still wandering in the, in the wilderness, and they have come to the mountain. And Moses has been up on the mountain to receive the, the Ten Commandments and meet with God, and he has returned, and he found that they have cast his golden calf at, while he was gone anxious, they got uh, uncertain about what was going on, and they got anxious and they cast this golden calf and a golden idol. And uh, so when Moses came down from the mountain, he was very angry, as was the Lord. He was very, they were very angry, and Moses broke the tablets that contained the, the laws that were handed down by God, and they destroyed the the golden calf, but still the damage had been done. The, the, the people had revolted against God. They had, they had gone against God, his directions to not have any gods before him, and not to cast any graven images. So this at this point in time, this is where they are. This is this is immediately following that. And 
So God goes goes about commanding Moses to go ahead and leave, uh, leave this place and head on to the land of milk and honey that I promised to Abraham, and Jacob, and Isaac. I promised you those things, and and now I want you to leave, and I want you to go forward, go to those places. And he says, I'm going to send an angel before you to to do away with those people who are already there, who who occupy that land today, and I'm going to send an angel before to to do that. I'm going to send that angel before to uh, to do away with those people. And I want you to go up, but I'm not going with you. God says, I'm not going with you. <laughs> he's pretty clear about the fact that he's not going with them because if he goes with them, he might get angry and he might destroy them because he is so upset from their resistance, from their uh, neglect of his commandments that, you know, they have gone against him and he continues to call them a stiff-necked people and they have not followed his commandments and he is just upset. He is very upset and he is, he is angry enough with them that uh, he, he feels like that if he goes with them on the continuation of this journey to the promised land that he may actually destroy them along the way. He tells them to take off their ornaments, and, and and the taking off of the ornaments or not putting on of the ornaments is a symbol of, of mourning. It's a symbol of, of distress, and, and and they do this. They they take off, and, and ornaments could be necklaces, or maybe in the case of women, earrings, or or it could be it could be any sort of. It doesn't have to be jewelry per se. You know, it could be any kind of, it could be special robes or anything, but any kind of ornaments that uh, that would normally be worn to adorn, taking them off or not putting them on to start with, was a symbol of warning or distress. So God says to them, you know, don't put them on, don't take them off, uh, don't, don't put those on, you need to be because of what you've done, because of the sin that you have committed, you need not to wear those ornaments. You need to not have that. Uh, you need to not have that happy atmosphere about you, that pleasant atmosphere about you. You need to be. You need to be in the state uh, that you are disturbed, that you are upset, that you are repentant about your sin. So God is, is reminding them of that. And so again, this is this is what he outlines to them. Well then Moses, Moses stands up. Moses says, You have been telling me to lead these people out, to, to, to lead these people, take them all with you. And now he asks, he says, uh, who will go with me? In other words, Moses, you may recall from your previous study of Moses, when God first called him to lead the people out, how he just, uh, Moses just felt like he was not the person to do it, that he was not capable of doing it, and that he, he just didn't have the abilities to do it. And God said, I, you had, I, I will give you whatever you need. And of course, Moses finally wound up accepting the job of, of leading them out. But once again here, we see Moses questioning his own ability and questioning whether or not uh, he's capable of doing it. And, and to his credit, admitting that he needs help, that he needs somebody to do it with him. With him. And he, Moses relies on God. But he, has, he, but he is saying, you know, who, who will go with me? Because he has just said, God has just said earlier, 
I'm not going with you. I'm not going with you because these are stiff-necked people, so I'm not going with you. So Moses is now saying, who are you going to send? Who are you going to send with me to go on to this promised land? He says, you found favor with me, and he quotes God saying that, that because God had said that he had found favor with Moses, and he said, if you're pleased with me, teach me your ways so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that the nation, this nation is your people, because God has said all along that these are my people, you are my children. Yet, God is very disturbed about how they are acting and how they are responding along this journey. So, Moses says, tell me who you're going to go with me. You've said, I'm not go you, you, God, have said, I'm not going to go with you. So, who are you going to send? Who are you going to send with me to lead these people? So, he, he is petitioning God for for somebody to help him, somebody to walk with him, somebody to go with me on this journey. And the Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. My presence will go with you. So Moses then replies, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. In other words, Moses is just trying to, to to really drive home the point, if, if you are not going with us, then please don't send us. Don't send us on the next leg of this journey without knowing that your presence is with us. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and, and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people all the other people on the face of the earth. Moses is really, he's really, he's, he's, he's honestly putting pressure on God to, to give them that guidance, to give him the guidance, to give the people the guidance. Moses is pressing hard. He is really pressing hard. And he's using the fact that God has found a favor in and he called, he says, you know me by my name. God, you have found favor with me. So I really need for you to stand by me. I need for your presence to be with us as we go forward on this journey. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. So God relented. God says, I'm going, I am going to go with you. I'm going to do what you've asked me to do. And then Moses presses on a little bit more, and he says, now show me your glory. And God says, I'm going to show my goodness to pass in front of you. I'm, my goodness will pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name. In other words, my goodness, and we're kind of, wondering what his goodness, quote unquote, looks like. But my goodness will pass in front of you and I will call my name. In other words, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you my name when my goodness passes in front of, of you. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Moses, you are not going to Tell me what to do. I'm not. I will tell you how I'm going to respond to you. My goodness will pass in front of you. And, you know, I'll have mercy on who I want to. And I'll have compassion on who I want to. And this is not, this is not arrogance. We might take this as, you know, well, God saying, I'm God, I can do anything. Well, we know that. and But it's God simply saying that, you know, I am the sovereign God. And, you know, you need to be reminded of that. These people need to be 
reminded of that. Not because God doesn't care about them, because we know he does. He has just taken them out of exile. He's taken them out of slavery. He cares about them. He's taking them to a land where things are good, where they will have a good life. And they have not respected what he has done for them. They have not cared about what he has done. Well, I shouldn't say they have cared about what he's done for them, but they haven't shown the proper appreciation for what he's done for them. They, they've still been, again, to use his term, they've been stiff-necked, they've been stubborn, honoring. And uh, so he's responding to but Moses, you can't see my face. You, for no one can see my face and live. So I'm not, you won't see my face. My glory will pass in front of you. My goodness will pass in front of you. But you will not see my face. He goes on to tell Moses that there's a place where Moses can stand on the rock, on a rock, and he can be there when God is getting ready to pass by, but when he actually does, when God is actually going to pass by in front of Moses, he is going to place Moses in the cleft of the rock so that he will not be able to see God as he passes by, and he will put his hand, he, God, will put his hand over the cleft of that rock so that Moses cannot see God as he passes by. Once he has passed by, he will remove his hand, and Moses will see, be able to see God's back, but he cannot see his face. He will not allow his face to be seen by Moses. When I remove my hand, and you will see my back, but my face must not, must not so God, uh, Moses, I'm going to pass by you. I'm gonna, you'll see my goodness and my presence, but you will still not be able to see my face. You will still not be able to recognize me from my face, but you will see me from the back. So, Moses, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to grant your request that, you pre that my presence will go with you. And you've asked me to see my glory. You, God is saying, you, Moses, have asked to see my glory. You're going to see my goodness pass by. You're going to see my presence, but you're not going to see my face. So the glory that he's referring to will not come in the form of seeing his face, but will come in the form of seeing. So as we finish those verses in the 33rd chapter, we do go into the 34th chapter and we see verses 5 through 8. And again, this is where the Lord came down in a cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. In other words, God comes down reveals his presence uh, as they begin their journey. He reveals his presence and he reveals, he reminds them of his name. This is God speaking. This is God saying, I am the Lord. And this is, this is who I am. Then he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, the Lord, the Lord. And he said, and he said, this is again, this is God speaking. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him, with Moses, and proclaimed his name, the Lord. Then he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious Lord. Slow to anger abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining the love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. 
God is saying, this is who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm a forgiving God. I'm a compassionate God. I'm a loving God. I'm a caring God. This is who I am. And this is, this is, this is who I am. This is the pre. This is my presence before you. I am the Lord, and I and the Lord is giving and comparing, compassionate, and sharing. This is who He is. This is God saying, "This is who I am." Yet He does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of their fathers to the third and fourth generation. So, God saying, I forgive you, I'm caring, I'm compassionate, I love you, but I'm also not leaving the guilty unpunished. And you are, you're going to continue to want you're going to continue to have difficulties on this journey. So, you know, it's not just going to be a swift visit to go to the promised land. You're going to wander. There's going to be difficulties. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to punish you a little bit. I wasn't going to even go with you before because I might just destroy you. I might just do away with you completely. But I relented. I relented on that. And I agreed to go with you. I agreed to show my presence to you and walk with you. So now he's saying, I'm here. I'm with you. I'm ready to go. Your sins are not, your guilt will not go unpunished. And Moses bowed to the ground at once. So Moses had, had been an advocate for the people. He had taken his case to God directly. He had asked God to relent. God did so. Showed his compassion. Showed his love. Showed his caring. He had relented on, on, his, on his initial position. And God and Moses was pleased thankful and grateful and so he bows down and he worships God and shows his appreciation by, by his worship. He shows his appreciation to God for what he has done. So that takes us to the end of our lesson. Um, I'd like to go ahead and read the closing prayer and, uh, and close out at this time. Again, I, I do remind you about next Sunday and, and truly hope that you will be able to join us, that you will, that you will come and that you will participate and, and enjoy the time together. Again, there's going to be uh, all of the protocols in place together safely and, and hope you will join us both for worship and for Sunday school or either or both or whatever works for you. But uh, we just look forward to seeing you then and being in your company and of course as always being in, God, <clears throat> in God's presence and back in God's house. Holy Lord, we thank you for your compassion, mercy, patience, loyalty, faithfulness, and forgiveness. Accept our words and songs of praise and thanksgiving. Make us always mindful of your presence with us. In Jesus' name we pray.